final category tonight, or today, depending on where you are right now in the world, money and business. And Bitcoin is on fire. Do you know what Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. A lot of people have heard of it at least, right? So it's up now to $4,000, over $4,000. In fact, I'm gonna, let's check on YouTube here. Let's check the price because there's a website I want to show you that is called, I don't know how you say this, Preev, P-R-E-E-V.com, Preev.com. And it's, uh, it gives you the price. And the cool thing is it basically updates in the tab. So if you have multiple tabs open in your browser, you can see the Bitcoin price and if it went up or down. And uh, you don't have to change to that tab. So it's at 4371 right now. And if you if we were to take a look at a chart, it's just skyrocketed lately. Now, another big currency, uh, a digital currency or a cryptocurrency, is called Ethereum. And another website you can go to for that, where the price changes at the top of the tab in your browser, ethereumprice.org. And you can see it's $305 there. And, but let's just take a look at this chart because uh, even Ethereum has gone up quite a bit. This is a 24-hour chart here. So we're going to go to three months. So a lot of people may have heard of Bitcoin in the news. Uh, in fact, I'll even go to one year with Ethereum here. Just take a look at this chart. February, it was at $15.00. In June, it got up to over 400. So if you had, in February, it was at $10, and then one Ethereum token or coin then was worth 400. Can you imagine? In only a few months. But then you look, it went way down. It got way down to 150. And now it's still a lot higher than February. But the thing about, and now it, it went back up. It's up over 300 now. And, and Bitcoin had a similar pattern, although now it's really skyrocketed, $4,300. And so we're going to talk about kind of how to, basically some of the issues involved. So the first thing is that this is very volatile. People know this. A lot of people that have even heard of it, and I'm going to tell you how to buy some if you want. The thing is, it could go to zero. The thing about Bitcoin is it might go to zero. We, we don't really know. I mean, I can tell you there's a lot of investment money in Bitcoin. The, the twins that started Facebook along with Zuckerberg, or they were involved with Facebook at the uh, beginning, I think the Winklevoss twins, I don't know how to say their name, I forgot. So in Silicon Valley, there's a lot of companies that have invested in Bitcoin and they are, uh, they're building applications. And I'm talking about millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. I don't know, it could be in the billions now. I actually have no idea. Uh, so Bitcoin, the, the volume is very small. It's billions of dollars in terms of how much is out there, how much is being traded. Compared to banks and, and sort of the monetary supply, it's very, very small, very small. But it's not, it's still pretty significant. And the cool thing about it is it's decentralized. And what does that mean? I think that's good because that means, in theory, right now, governments aren't in control. Now, they can track your transactions. So some people think it's secretive. You know, when you use Bitcoin or Ethereum, you're, you're sort of uh, using it and it's, uh, you know, they're, I don't know. People might be trying to be doing bad things. They think it's you're, you're anonymous. You're not anonymous. Your transactions, to my understanding, can be tracked and they can be traced to you. So that's why I think the governments haven't shut it down. And if you listen to interviews with like Ben Bernanke, the former uh, Federal Reserve chairman, he says that um, he actually kind of likes Bitcoin or he likes the technology behind it. And I think part of the reason the governments haven't shut it down is because you can track it. And I think they're waiting to see what happens. And there are more regulations being, being passed uh, regarding it. The reason why I think it's good 
and why I think it's a future is because it is decentralized. What does that mean? It's sort of spread out. It's not, there's not necessarily one entity controlling it. And I think that is a good step for us in terms of humanity. And a lot of people, and we're going to ask Jim Rogers, the billionaire, we're going to interview him. He's going to be on our show, and he's been on shows all over CNBC and every major news network. And we're going to ask him, I'm going to ask him, uh, you know, a lot of people see Bitcoin in a way like sort of hedging their bets against a crash. Jim Rogers was all over the news recently talking about that there's going to be a major crash in the economy, the biggest since maybe the Great Depression, I think in the 30s. And if you look at how high the stocks have gone up, and it's really based on, in my opinion, no, nothing legitimate. That's just, and that's what I've heard from a lot of people we interviewed, especially earlier in the year. There, there don't seem to be any fundamentals. I know actually in the U.S. right now there is. There's tremendous job growth, which is something good. So I can see that helping. But we never really had a, we haven't had a recession since 2008, and it's almost 10 years. And I don't think we've added, I don't think we've fixed our problems since then. We still have a huge national debt. Now, it is dropping a little bit. Since President Trump took over, the debt has gone down a little bit. And I think that's good. Here's the secret, though. There, there could be people in Congress, even Republicans, that don't actually want it to go down. That's a whole other discussion. It's very strange. Uh, it's just an observation. And um, so Bitcoin, I think, is a good step forward um, because I think that just like every company, every company, every industry, banks have an agenda in addition to just helping you to store money. There are agendas. And you really know the agendas when you know what the board of directors who control a company, what their agenda is. And if you don't know that, you do not know the agenda. That's just the bottom line. And it's not necessarily just what they say. So there is an agenda. So Bitcoin, um, a lot of money right now is tied into big oil, uh, big pharma, banking, you know, there's a fourth and I'm, I'm missing, but it's big money and they all, there is, there are agendas for each. So Bitcoin being decentralized, I do like that. I do like that a lot. So some people think, and what I may ask Jim Rogers is, is, is this sort of like hedging your bet? People used to talk about buying gold before, uh, before a big recession, because if there's a crash, gold will go up. And if you look at what happened around 2008, 2009, the price of gold went up because there was a recession. And uh, you can see that pattern that actually happened. So I'm gonna ask him if he thinks Bitcoin is the same way. Is Bitcoin something that you would buy to hedge your bets in case there's a big crash? Some people are talking about, could it, and it's at 4,000 now, it was just literally two or three weeks ago, it was at 1888. So it almost doubled in two weeks, and it actually dropped from almost 3,000 to 1,800. I don't know if it was 1,888. It was around 1,800, and then now it's back over 4,000, and it's never gotten this high. And some people are thinking, man, could it get to 12,000, 13,000? And uh, we're going to ask Jim Rogers what he thinks about that, and if he thinks it's, it's something you would buy like gold in case there's that big crash. Uh, China is very active in terms of Bitcoin. They have currency controls and other things. So China is very active when it comes to trading Bitcoin. And it's and it's because of their currency controls, it's something they can put their money into in case there is a crash or in case the governments kind of screw up this monetary situation, which I think most people would agree. It does seem that they have. And so what's going to replace it? Or is it going to continue? Or, or how does Bitcoin fit into that? And can the governments control it? I know they can. They can pass laws. There are different laws state to state in the United States about Bitcoin. So I would be very cautious with Bitcoin. It's a little bit like gambling, in my opinion. But it, it, it did go to 4,000. Some people are saying it could get up over 10,000. But it could go to zero. You could lose everything. But that's, that's how most investments are. 
If you invest in a company, it could also go to zero if it goes bankrupt, right? So um, it does appear to be very volatile. And I have a great friend who has a strategy. He, he bought it when it was at $300. Now it's at $4,000. So he bought a lot of it when it was at almost $300 in 2015, I think, early 2015. And he likes when it goes down because he buys more. Because what it's done, when it goes down, it, it generally, if you look at the chart, like a chart of the value of Bitcoin, over years, or excuse, yeah, over years, it, even if it goes down, eventually it goes up even higher. But who knows if that will continue, right? So that's, that's the gamble. But it does appear to be a, quite a legitimate form of currency. We're looking into launching our own digital currency um, and... Who knows? Uh, because actually, we think that it can appeal more to a broader audience. And um, I do want to show you before we go what I think is the easiest way to invest or to get a hold of Bitcoin in the United States and I think other countries as well. But in the United States, there's only so many ways where it's like easy to do and it's safe, I think, you know, fairly safe. Uh, Coinbase.com is the website and you can see it here our YouTube viewers and you can uh, buy Bitcoin with a debit card a credit card and also your bank account and it's FDIC insured so your deposits when you deposit US dollars um, there's FDI to my knowledge I'm about 97 percent sure you can actually your FDIC insured so if something happens with Coinbase in theory, the government will, <laughs> will give you your money, although there have been some crashes and weird things with Coinbase, and uh, I think it might only apply to your U.S. dollar balance, not necessarily your Bitcoin balance. So you got to look at those specifics, especially if you're going to put a lot of money there uh, into Coinbase and into Bitcoin. But it's, it's a U.S., because the U.S. has certain regulations or they're coming up with more and more regulations. It's something that's approved in, in, I think, all 50 states where you can buy Bitcoin. It's legal. You don't have to do any weird bank transfers and everything. And you can start to kind of have a Bitcoin balance if you want to. But it's very volatile. It could go way up. It could go to zero. I'm going to wait and see. We're going to ask Jim Rogers. And I want to hear what you think about Bitcoin. So comment on this video at youtube.com forward slash believe loves you. Or go to our website, www.believe.love, and uh, join us on iTunes, believeitunes.com, believeandroid.com for Android users. Get involved with our community. We want to help you to achieve success. We want to get you the truth. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. It's been really fun for me. Uh, let's change the world. Thank you. My name is Nicholas Upchurch. We'll look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for joining us on Believe.